Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing tips for beginner harpists. So my number one tip is probably something that every musician has heard thousands of times, but it is so, so important. Remember to tune daily. I feel like sometimes people let tuning slide when it comes to like harp or like piano because they're like, well, it's not like the violin because like, I don't know, like in violin or cello, the intonation is like literally up to you. <laughs> like your finger has to put it in the right note i guess but like in harp like when you pluck it that's the note you're gonna get like you can't change the pitch as you play like you have to tune it to the right note and so i feel like for that reason people sometimes disregard how important it is to like have the harp be in tune every time you play and it's out of tune your ear is like getting used to it being out of tune it's so important that when you first start music that you train your ear to know what's in tune and what's not in tune so that way like I don't know, let's say you're like at a college audition or something and you're playing on the harp at the college and there's a string that's out of tune, it's your job to fix it like in between pieces in that audition. You can't rely on the judges to like tune it for you, it's your job to tune it. But if you haven't like developed that ear and you don't catch that a string's out of tune and just keep playing with it out of tune, that'll dock you points. And that's just like one small scenario, but like it's just so important to have your ear trained to know what's in tune and what's not in tune. And so if you don't tune your harp every day and you practice without a tune you're gonna get used to it being out of tune and then you won't know what's in tune and what's not out of tune you can't like hear the subtle differences in like intonation hopefully that makes sense that was a lot of rambling but yeah it is so important to like tune daily not only because it's healthier for the heart but also it's really good for your ear and you can train it better tip number two it is so important to like drill in your technique every day so like have a good warm-up routine or something even though like i've been playing for like 12 years now i'm still drilling in the basic techniques of plucking a string. There's this book I had to read in college. It's called The Little Book of Talent. So this book splits skills into two separate things. They have hard skills and soft skills. Hard skills is the technique. It's the hand pop position and the posture, how to properly play the harp. <laughs> soft skills is like the more musicality part, the more like in the moment things, like be able to like feel the mood of the piece and like slowing down or like changing the tone just to match the piece. That's the soft skill part, like learning how to adapt in the moment, I guess. It is so important to every single day drill in those hard skills because if you can get really, really, really good at like your technique and things, it'll make the musicality part so much easier. Let's say like you're playing a super hard piece with like a lot of um, running scales or something. If you don't have a strong foundation in basic scales and playing the scales in that hard piece beautifully, it's going to be extremely hard. So the first step is like getting a strong foundation so you can add in your own interpretation afterwards. Oh yeah, also important when you're doing techniques, don't go like super fast. The point of like warm up and technique is to focus on the tiny details of where your wrist should be, how you should close. Like, even though it can get tedious, it is so important to do that. So that way when you're playing a big piece, you don't have to relearn it. You don't have to like worry about that. You know, it's like hardwired in your brain. Like you know how to do it already. Tip number three, metronome practice. I don't know why, I feel like especially in like beginner musicians, the metronome scares them. They like refuse to use it and it just like confuses them even more and so they don't like using it. But the metronome is so important. It's just another strong foundation that you need. I feel like the rhythmic things, it helps you really even out the difference between like an eighth note and a sixteenth note and a thirty second note. Like it just helps with like all these really good basic things. Good to get used to the metronome when you're young. What I always do when I first start learning a piece, I play it with the metronome super slow. That way everything is in tempo, even though it's like crazy slower than like it's supposed to be. Everything's in tempo. And that helps me learn it a lot faster because once I can do it all correctly in time, just super slow, that way when I speed it up, I speed it up correctly. If you learn it super, super slow with the metronome, then there's like a really, really, really low chance of you learning it wrong or anything it just makes it a lot easier and then also you memorize it a lot better because if you can play something super slow by memory <laughs> then you memorize it really good <laughs> metronome is important use it when you're practicing my fourth tip is to memorize all the pieces that you learned it's such an important skill to have to be able to play without the music in front of you also i feel like when you memorize something you can play it better than if you have the music in front of you that's just how i feel i feel like you have more control over it if it's memorized because having to like look at your hands to the music I feel like that just kind of like is a lot of work and so if you're performing and you don't have to worry about looking at the music and it's like all in your brain you just have more time to focus on the actual music and less about like 
the notes. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I would just suggest memorizing everything before you perform it. And then this next tip ties into the memorizing thing too. Practice performing everything before you perform perform it. If you have a big recital coming up, I'd say like maybe like three weeks before the recital, I would perform it for like your family or friends every week leading up to the recital. So that way when you get to the recital, it's not like your first time ever performing it for someone. Like you kind of get the jitters over with and you kind of learn what you tend to do under stress. So you learn how you perform. I feel like people don't always talk about this, but as a musician, not only are you learning how to play the instrument, you have to learn how to literally perform it. As you practice perform, you might learn, oh, I tend to mess up at this spot every single time so you can drill it. And the next time you practice perform it, you can be like, oh, I realized I get super nervous here. I haven't messed up, but I got really nervous here. And you can practice that part again. So you lessen the chance of messing up at the real thing, you know, like the real performance. This is my last tip. Write in your repair points. I don't know if everyone's heard of repair point. At least everyone I've met who plays the harp knows what a repair point is. But for those of you who don't know what a repair point is, the repair point is basically spots where you put in a pedal chart. And this is what a pedal chart looks like. I have a repair point here, a repair point here, a repair point here. I like to do it every idea or phrase. So like, for example, here's like one phrase. And and then you get into a new idea and that's where I put my next repair point. That's why I like to do it. When I'm practicing, I will sometimes start at this repair point and play through this like a few times. Or I'll start at this repair point and I play through that a few times. And the goal is to like end up memorizing where each of your repair points are. So that way without the music, you can just start at any section there. This works with lover harp. You just don't need to put the pedal chart. It really helps with pedal harps because sometimes when you're like mid piece, you forget your pedals <laughs> you're like, where am I in the middle of a section? But if you know the next repair point, you know the pedal set, and you can just skip this section you forget and jump to the next repair point and be like, keep going. And it's a smooth, hopefully it's smooth, <laughs> and hopefully the audience won't really notice too much. And it just, it just helps in case you can't remember something. Love a harpist, it really helps remembering the notes. Pedal harpist, it helps with the notes and your pedals. And it also helps you kind of keep track of like what key you're in for pedal harpist, or like if it's not a key, like what accidentals are gonna be in this section, you know? It's just super good. So write in your repair points. It is so good for you. I feel like people get lazy all the time and don't do it, but do it. Write in your pedal charts. So yeah, those are my tips for beginner harpists. Don't give up. Just keep trying every single day and don't be too hard on yourself. Goodness, no. Everything is a learning experience. So don't let anything drag you down. Just keep going, keep practicing and have fun with it. And I wish everyone luck with practicing the harp. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for watching. Bye.